Hey guys, it's Matt with Meat Church and welcome back to my outdoor kitchen. Tonight, I'm gonna show you guys how to make what Texas barbecue is all about, brisket. Hallelujah. We're gonna be smoking this brisket on a mill scale, 94 gallon offset smoker. But as usual, I'm teaching you guys time and temperature so you can replicate this on whatever type of smoker you have. Stick around. So this is the video you came to this channel for. Texas barbecue is all about brisket and there's no better place to learn it. I mean, we're taking a 44 Farms brisket out of Cameron, Texas. We're gonna season it with my craft barbecue seasoning made in Fort Worth, Texas. We're gonna smoke it on a handmade smoker out of Lockhart, Texas with post oak, which is crazy Texan. And I, heck, I'm even gonna do it on a Texas flag cutting board cooked by a Texan. So we're super excited about this. We're gonna make this really simple. We've already trimmed this full packer brisket. I said it was 44 farms. Um, I'm not actually gonna show you how to trim it in this video just to keep the length down, but I've got a video on the Meat Church channel uh, that shows you how we got to this point. So we're gonna start right here and we're just gonna jump into seasoning it. Then I'm gonna tell you how to cook it and we're gonna get going. But listen, it's nighttime here at my house. My whole family's in bed and we're gonna do this the right way. We're gonna all nighter it. Um, low and slow on this thing. I'm gonna be tired come tomorrow, but I don't wanna take any shortcuts when it comes to what Texas barbecue is all about and I'm gonna do it right. So hope you guys enjoy it. My seasoning process is simple. Two parts holy cow to one part holy gospel. Um, but you guys season with whatever you like. Texas barbecue is known to be salt and pepper typically, but I'll tell you a lot of barbecue joints in Central Texas add a little something else. So that's what we're doing. But our holy cow is mostly salt and pepper with a little bit of garlic. Um, I'm going to season the meat side first, uh, and then I'm gonna flip it over and repeat the process on the other side. I'm not applying any sort of binder. You're welcome to do that. Some folks use mustard, oils. Um, this brisket is you know, nice and wet, and I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna jump in and start seasoning it. Of course, I'm gonna season the sides. Oop. Knock my drink over. Let's just get after it. I season about a foot to 18 inches high to keep my seasoning application nice and even. So I'm going kind of moderate with the holy cow. I'm just gonna pat it in a little. Again, make sure you get the sides and then I'm gonna come back across that with the holy gospel. If you don't have a favorite rub that you use, feel free to go with a 50-50 salt and pepper. That'll make a great brisket. But this is a proven combination particularly out of the Texas competition barbecue scene. So that's why we're doing it. So I just went lighter with the Holy Gospel. Now, if I had all the time in the world, I'd let that sit 15 or 20 minutes. But since we're making a video, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and flip it and get on to the other side. And not to skip ahead, but I cook fat up. That's the traditional Texas way. So that's why we season the meat side first. But there's no right or wrong way. If you prefer to cook meat up, um, you're welcome to do that. That makes a fine brisket. Uh, it's very prevalent in competition. But what I'm showing you today is what I'm calling a traditional Texas brisket. Uh, this is what you would find at a barbecue joint in Texas. So we're staying true to tradition with what we're doing today. So again, just use whatever seasoning combinations you like. But this is a good one, I can promise you. All right, I'm gonna kind of pat it in but we are going to uh, let this adhere for 20-ish minutes or so until uh, the seasoning has sweat out. So uh, the meat will start to kind of pull the moisture, you'll, you'll, the seasoning will start to pull the moisture out um, and it'll start to look kind of wet. So we're gonna let it adhere. This is also something you could do the night before. Um, you could trim it up, season it and have it in your fridge, but you know, we're just doing it straight through here for the video. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna check on my fire and let this sit and we'll come back and check on it in about 20 minutes. All right, guys, this seasoning is adhered and this brisket's just begging to be smoked, so let's go. Cooking a brisket is not that hard. I know a lot of people are intimidated by it, but tonight I'm gonna show you guys a two-step process. We're gonna put this brisket in the pit low, and then tomorrow morning, we're gonna wrap it when it's somewhere around 165, 170 degrees when the bark looks right. We're gonna bump the temp up to about 250 degrees, 
and we're gonna cook it until this brisket is probe tender right here. And it's that simple. A lot of ways to skin a cat when it comes to cooking a brisket. If y'all follow me for a while, you know my online recipe has been to cook a brisket at 275 degrees. Well, that's a method that I run with when I need to get it cooked during the day in like nine to 10 hours. But I'm gonna smoke this brisket overnight, so I'm gonna go low tonight. We're gonna cook this at 225 degrees or so. And it's okay if you vary from that just a little bit. If you cook hotter, then it's gonna cook quicker. But I'm gonna baby this thing overnight. So we're running a post oak fire. We're gonna set this brisket in the pit and I'm gonna put the point in towards the firebox. I'm actually gonna trim and season another brisket and we're gonna cook two at the same time because like I say, if you're gonna fire your pit up, let's make it worthwhile and feed a bunch of people. But we're gonna try to stretch this out to the morning time. I'm gonna take my kids to school in the morning um, and wrap it sometime around that time, probably just when the sun comes up. So y'all stick around, we'll check in on this thing. We'll see y'all in a little bit. So I tell people don't be intimidated by running a fire. This is actually super relaxing. This fire is running good right now, uh, good temperature. I, you know, the firebox and the door is about big temperature changes and then the stack is where I kind of fine tune things. This pit loves to run kind of sitting right here. But as you can see, we're running a, a pretty clean fire here right now, which is a key to good barbecue. You don't want the thick white smoke. So if I want to make small adjustments, I kind of mess with it here. If the temp gets too low, I'm gonna open the door, give it a bunch of oxygen and some small pieces to kick the fire up pretty quick. But this is gonna be a calm, relaxing night for me. I'm about to send my crew to get some sleep and I'm gonna sit here, enjoy some beer and a, an unusually cool Texas evening. So we'll see y'all. Well, good morning, y'all. It's been a long, uh, but relaxing, uh, fun night, I would say. Needless to say, I've switched to Monster, left the Miller Lite at some point overnight. But the mill scale has run great. It's, uh, it's been rocking 225 all night. It's time to wrap. Um, I've just temped the briskets, I'll show you that. They're temping just above 165, so the time doesn't really matter. You're looking for visual cues and the right internal temperature. And now we're gonna wrap in unwaxed butcher paper. And you probably see this a lot and wonder why people do this, but we're gonna kinda just give it a little spritz here with cider vinegar. That makes the paper more pliable, easier to deal with. I'll show you the briskets here. Looking super good. But here in the flat, in a couple spots, we're at 167. So you're gonna be looking for that color. That's what's most important in the temperature. Not so much worried about the time. I know it was just over seven hours or so, maybe close to eight. I don't remember exactly what time we put them on. It was, was kind of fairly late last night. But I've got our 18 inch paper here, overlapped. I might have went a little heavy with the cider vinegar. That's okay. It's gonna work out. So I've got the two pieces overlapped here. There's a lot of ways to do this, to be honest with you. The important thing is that it's wrapped tight. Of course, it's windy as soon as we start shooting. That's all right. That's why we like cooking outside. It is what it is. Oop. I like to keep it nice and tight. Man, and there we go. So we're still fat side up. We've been fat side up the entire cook. I told y'all earlier, that's kind of the traditional Texas way. We're going back in the pit. I'm gonna wrap this other one. I'm gonna bump the fire up to 250 degrees now. If you wanted to serve this for supper, then keep it low. Just keep it running low and bump it up later. Again, don't get so hung up in the temperature. Adjust the temperature to your life and when you want the food. We want this um, for you know a lunch today. So we're gonna bump the temp up to 250 and this should finish in a, somewhere between three to four hours. Every brisket's different, probably closer to four, but we'll monitor it. Um, we'll check the temperature right here in the flat, right through the paper as the day goes on and uh, we'll keep you all posted. All right guys, let's check in on the brisket. Now, as you can see, paper's completely wet. This has naturally occurred. I know there's a big fad of people putting tallow on their briskets. I don't think it's necessary. Tallow's just gonna make your bark wet. 
uh, and, and that's not going to go into the meat anyway. So, and I told you, you could just kind of poke through the paper. I've got a couple spots I've been checking. We're 180 ish. So we're gonna keep rolling here for just a little bit. Hopefully we're, you know, we're no more 45 minutes or an hour away. It'll be time to rest it and then we'll go to eat. Been rolling this brisket since last night. I've been temping them so I know they're close to being done. And hey, I'm still wearing the same clothes, so smells great. What I do with the brisket, I've showed you we've been temping it right here, which by the way, I'm, I know I'm good because I just checked it. I'm right on 203. I actually like to squeeze the brisket, but if, you know, if you're only cooking one a month or something like that, I don't expect you to know how that feels, but this brisket's done. And as I pick it up with this insulated glove, it's flexible. Like I know, I know it's done. So we need to rest it now. So let me give you a little tip on resting. If you're only, if you're going to eat this in about an hour, you can rest it in ambient temperature. It's nice weather in Texas, so I can leave it out here and just let it sit for 45 minutes to an hour. If you need to hold your meat for longer than an hour, then I'd drop it in a dry cooler and you can hold it for a really long time. But setting this thing at about an hour, it's gonna drop down to be right at the temperature we wanna eat it. So I'm gonna let this rest. I'm actually gonna pull the other one out um, and then we're gonna get to eat. All right guys, this is what it's all about. All that hard work you put in running that fire all night and half the day. It's time to unwrap this baby. I've let this rest about 45 minutes. It actually needs to rest a little longer. It's still pretty warm, but given how long we've cooked and the fact that this was for lunch, it's a little late lunch now, we don't want to wait any longer. We're, uh, we're opening this up and we're going to eat. Damn. She's a beaut. Pour a little, pour this, this juice on here. Ooh, that's a little much, but oh well. I don't want to waste that. Put on old cowhide there. Sorry about that. You're already mad that I'm cooking your cousin, so it'll be good. All right, she looks really good. That's that's really really tender. Uh, first thing I'm going to do with my slicer is you actually normally separate the flat and the point. So we'll make a pretty, pretty good little incision right here. Slice, I should say. Oh yeah, she's juicy. And I always say you should never squeeze you know, your briskets. I'm just barely gonna do it, just, just to show you the juice that you know came out of this low and slow cook on the mill scale. Um, you know, Don't wanna squeeze too much because you're just robbing yourself of a, of a juicy bite. But on the flat side, you, know, you wanna go kind of number two pencil size slices. I know y'all hear the camera clicking there. I've been a model with my meat most of my life, so I'm used to it. Whew, man, that is tender. Now on the point, the grain actually runs a different direction, so you should spin that. And you can actually slice this this direction. I'll just show you here. Normally you go a little larger, more wide slices in the point. Uh, it's fattier and wider slices help keep it together. There you go there. Man, that looks super good. Whew. Look at that. So we know it's cooked right. Can't wait too much longer. This pops right apart. More tender than your mother's love. That's why I love a fat up brisket. Perfectly rendered fat with that holy cow and holy gospel on the fat in the post oak smoke. That bite is tough to beat. You can cook a meat up brisket and that's fine, um, but I actually prefer this. Man, that's just so tough to beat. Pure Texas right there. Ain't mad at it. Well, appreciate you guys sticking with us. It was a long cook, but it was fun. I'm tired, but I can sleep tonight. 
But hey, if you guys like what we're doing, please like and subscribe to our channel. Hope to see you guys next week.